Wait, did you just get tricked by that previous message on the screen? And try to look at your internet connection? I hope not, but it sure does bring us to today's topic, wait. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing good. Perhaps you know the feeling of waiting to cross the city roads or for the elevator when it seems to take forever to arrive at your floor and you keep on pressing the button again and again. How annoying, right? Or your phone battery dies. You have to plug the phone in and now there's nothing to do but to sit and wait. And it is really only a matter of minutes but you're staring at the phone's screen and you start to feel tense and anxious, wondering how long this could possibly take. Or you are on the road, driving a car. For every green light, it seems like there are five yellow signals and a dozen of red ones. Let's admit it, we all have to wait whether we like it or not. Or given the current COVID phase, in order to follow social distancing rules, you have to wait in queues at the banks or stores or offices, and we pretty much are in the waiting season. Our patience is put to test now more than ever. Waiting is one of the hardest parts of life whether it is waiting for an appointment to see the doctor, waiting to get the vaccine, waiting to graduate, waiting to be accepted in university, waiting for your job offer, waiting to see if the bank will approve the loan, waiting for someone to buy your house, or even waiting for your prayers to be answered. We've all might have heard the prayer in this context, Lord, Make me more patient, but do it now. We often get frustrated waiting on food at the cafeteria or restaurant, or waiting behind that slow car in the fast lane, or even a little kid wanting to grow up. We are always in a rush to get to the next place or the next thing. If there is one thing people in our generation hate to do, it is to wait. And why should we? We can Google questions rather than wait for answers. We can order almost anything online rather than suffering the long waiting lines at the retail stores. We live in a world of frozen dinners, instant coffee, drive through windows, check-in kiosks, freeway express lanes, cell phones, and smartwatches. This instant everything is so engraved in our mind that today our motto has become give it to me quick or forget about it. Dr. Larry Dossey, a Dallas internist, coined a term that describes this problem. People who hate to wait suffer from what he calls hurry sickness, which he defines as an increased sensitivity to the passage of time. He believes that people suffering from hurry sickness die before their time. Unfortunately, today, a lot of us suffer from this hurry sickness. People today complain about having too much on their plates, about living life in the fast lane, about not having enough hours in the day and running a race even a rat couldn't win. And although at times we could feel like we want to slow down, we don't. Because we are afraid that the world will fall apart if we do slow down. But the funny thing is, one day we all will slow down completely and permanently. And this world will go right on without us. This rushing mindset often carries over into our spiritual lives. We always hurry 
to the next big thing. But while most of us are in a hurry, it seems God is usually not in a hurry. It seems He always has a plan and a purpose for everything. Since we are not aware of all the details, we become impatient. From our perspective, we have everything figured out and we want God to move within our time frame. But God rarely does things according to our time frame and because of this, we can easily get discouraged. If we aren't careful enough, we'll think He's uncaring or has forgotten us. Without the waiting room element at the doctor's office, everything would be chaotic. There would be no order, no schedule, and no structure. Patients would get mixed up and rooms would get double booked. Medicines or prescriptions would get wrongly distributed. It would be a total disaster. So would our lives be if we were left to our own timetable. Our spiritual waiting rooms, just like in real life, are there for a purpose. As waiting is a part of life, it is also one of God's tools for developing His children. Once a king of a certain country was growing old, and he had no son to succeed him, he announced to his people that he would choose an heir to the throne from among the young men of the country by a competitive test, which would give all an equal chance to participate. On the day appointed, a great number of young men presented themselves. A certain test was made, and some failed while others passed. Then there was a series of other tests, and each time some were rejected, till at last only three were left. They were put through test after test, but all were equally capable. The king announced through his heralds that on the next day the matter would be decided by a foot race. The path was marked, the judges were all set at their places, and everything was ready. Just at this time, a man came up to each one of the contestants and secretly said to them, The king is taking special note of you. Do not run when the trumpet is played. Instead, wait until the king gives you a special signal. The three participants took their respective spots and were eager to participate in the race. The trumpet played Hearing the sound, one moved forward quickly, then hesitated and stopped. Then another sprang forward after him, upon which the first started moving forward again, and they ran for the goal with all their speed. Now if we can relate to this, what do you think prompted them to run? Reason A. They did not believe the message, probably thought that the man was trying to trick them into failing. Reason B. They compared themselves to one another and thought they had to participate and not just wait. Or C. They wanted to look good in the eyes of others. They had to show their skills at speed. Or is it D. All of the above. What do you think the reason was? Was it all of the above? While you contemplate, let's get back to the story. So the third contestant was standing there, looking anxiously at the king and at the two runners, murmuring to himself, I can still make it, I can still make it. The king looked at the runners and gave no heed to the one still standing. His total focus was on the runners. 
The waiting man thought to himself that the king probably had forgotten about him. That's why the king never bothered to give a signal. Now he realized that it would be practically impossible for him to win the race, as the runners were way too ahead. He felt that all was lost for him. Now, my question to everyone listening to this is, do you think he made the right call? Or was that a big mistake? Well, let's find out. So back to the field. The true runners ran at top speed, reaching the goal together. They were out of breath after that tough competition, yet happy that they ran. Now they were brought back and all three stood before the king. The king said to the first participant, Were you not told not to run until I gave the signal? Uh, yes, I was, but I thought that... Before he could even complete, the king said, Why then did you run? I got so focused on the goal that I forgot, said the first one. He asked the second person the same question. The second contestant replied, I thought it would be but a moment till you would give the signal. I thought we were being tricked and the real test was participating in the race. When there is no race, there can be no competition, right? So my logical mind told me to run, seeing the other person running. Now the king asked the third one, and he said, And why did you not run? Because you did not give the signal, sir, he answered. Even though my mind was tricking me into running, I fought with it continuously and reminded myself to trust my gut feeling that this competition has more to it than just running. And so I waited. My focus was on you, sir. I was waiting for you and your signal. I stood right there, counting on your signal, but I did not run because you never gave the sign. He sounded pretty low when he said, I didn't even run. My son, said the king, I knew that you could run, but I did not know that you could wait. The king was so happy to declare him as the next ruler as he had faith in him. Now the third contestant was surprised yet really happy being declared the winner. What mattered more to him was following the command given by the king. So the young man found that the test was not a test of doing but of waiting. God also says to us, I know that you could run. I know you could work with all your strength, but can you wait on me? It is a hard lesson to learn, and many times we could grow weary. Many times we may long for the end of the waiting, but the lessons we learn help us and teach us patience in the waiting. Sometimes it could seem that the answers would never come. Sometimes it could seem as if God has forgotten us. But we have to remind ourselves again and again, be patient and wait. One significant difference in the physical waiting room and the spiritual waiting room is that God's timing is always perfect. Unlike a doctor who often gets called away for emergencies and throws off his schedule, God never falters. 
He never has to resort to plan B or rescheduling. He never overbooks his patients. His plans and his timing for us are 100% on the target from the beginning till the end. God puts us in his waiting room on purpose because he is often doing something behind the scenes while we wait. Patience is a lot like baking cookies. They start out as a small piece of uncooked dough, but with time, they grow into bigger round cookies. When you bake cookies, you have to put them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. You could take them out early after five minutes, but they wouldn't be done. They would be mushy and fall apart in your hand. Or you can increase the oven temperature to maximum, but the cookies will be left undone from within and possibly burn outside. They would not be what they are designed to be. But if you carefully follow the instructions and wait until the cookies are ready, when you take them out, they will be baked to perfection and will taste way better. We can rush and push things in our lives that we think should happen when we want them to happen. We can do things our own way instead of waiting on God, but we may not necessarily be ready for what God is trying to give us at that particular time. We could be patient and wait for God to act in our lives instead of forcing things ourselves. When our trust is in our Maker, we realize what matters most isn't what's happening to us, but what's happening in us. He can use the waiting room to refine our character, or bring transformation in our lives, or even teach us to hope and persevere patiently. Matan Muni said to Shabri, O devotee of Rama, your austerities and spiritual longing for Lord Rama will not go in vain. Lord Rama will surely visit this ashram. Shabri's master Matang Muni asked her to wait for the arrival of Lord Rama. He did not tell her how long it would take, how many years it would take, neither did she question. The devotee of Rama got up every morning with enthusiasm. She cleaned the path every day. Had she thought, what is the point of doing all this? Lord Rama is not coming. Do you think she would be remembered the way she is today? No. She had faith in her master's word that if he has said that Lord Rama will come, he will surely come. She waited for so many years, she never gave up. And all that waiting paid off when Lord Rama visited her. Moses spent 40 years tending to sheep before God called him as a deliverer of his people. Had he not waited patiently with God's plan, history told in his name today will be different. Other than being frustrated with the wait or always complaining, let's use every bit of the waiting to build ourselves and to better ourselves. During the moments when we want to give up on the waiting, let's remind ourselves, our dear God has a plan and it is definitely better than our own plan. Can we learn to commit our ways to Him and feel that if our desire is still unsatisfied, if obstacles are not yet removed, if trials yet bear upon us, God is not growing cold, nor is His hearing dull, nor has He forgotten us. At the proper time and in the proper way, the answer will be sure. And because of the delay, the answer will be fuller and will enrich us more. Wait patiently on the Lord. Trust in Him fully. 
then out of your waiting will come strength and out of your sorrow will come joy and out of your bitterness will come sweetness and at the end of the way we will find a crown there is a wonderful poem i came across which i would like to share with you to me it felt like my master was talking to me and sending me a signal through this poem desperately helplessly longingly i cried quietly patiently lovingly he replied i pleaded and i wept for a clue to my fate and the master so gently said child you must wait wait you say wait my indignant reply lord i need answers i need to know why my future and all to which i can relate hangs in the balance and you tell me to wait i'm needing a yes a go ahead sign or even a no to which i can resign you promise dear lord that if we believe we need but ask and we shall receive and lord i've been asking and this is my cry i'm weary of asking i need a reply then quietly softly i learned of my fate as my master replied once again you must wait so i slumped in my chair defeated and taught and grumbled to god so i'm waiting for what he seemed then to kneel and his eyes met with mine and he tenderly said i could give you a sign i could give all that you see and please you would be you'd have what you want but you wouldn't know me you'd not learn to see through clouds of despair you'd not learn to trust just by knowing i'm there you'd not know the joy of resting in me when darkness and silence are all you could see you'd never know should your pain quickly flee what it means that my grace is sufficient for thee yes your dearest dreams overnight could come true but oh the loss if you missed what i'm doing in you so be patient my child and in time you will see that the greatest of gifts is to truly know me and though often my answers seem terribly late my most precious answer of all is still wait 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 so the next time when you're put in god's waiting room don't complain instead claim it's happening for a reason Sometimes the wait is for God to align other pieces of the plan. Sometimes the wait is for God to align the pieces of our own heart. Open your heart and allow yourself to be changed for the better and to use this time of waiting to grow deeper in faith and love. Let wait become the resolution to your problem instead of a wait problem becoming your resolution. Let's be patient and gain weight. For more such videos and motivating messages, subscribe to our channel.